Hello, everybody. Welcome to Live at Five. It is Wednesday, April 3rd. I'm Beth Stevens. And I'm Andy Lefkowitz. And we're here in the studio with Caitlin Moynihan. Hello. With full Fosse hands. She's getting ready for Fosse Burden. <laughs> I'm really ready. It's coming. It's coming. And we have a, an illustrious guest. We do. We have Stephen Skybell here from Fiddler on the, U, the, Fiddler on the Roof <laughs> in Yiddish. Woo! Fiddler on the Youth. There we go. There we go. We will get to Mr. Skybell. But first, our top five. The nominees of Off-Broadway's Biggest Awards have finally been announced. Yes, yeah, so big news today. We got the nominations for the Lucille Lortel Awards mm -hmm. uh, in 19 different categories. Honors just the gonna, best of Off-Broadway. The best of Off-Broadway. Let's just do the most important one. Yes, you got Congratulations, it. Stephen Congratulations, Stephen Scott. Scott. Oh, nominated nomination. Woo! For his performance in Fiddler. Okay, you can go to the well And the deserved. production was also nominated for Outstanding Revival, and Jackie Hoffman was nominated Congratulations, Yiddish Fiddler. We're so excited about it. Um, other nominees include um, Carmen Jones, the revival of Carmen Jones, which appeared at Classic Stage, and Rags Parkland Sings the Songs of the Future, which was the show that appeared at Ars Nova. They both received six nominations apiece. Um, from a Broadway standpoint, Be More Chill and What the Constitution Means to Me, both of which transferred to Broadway, were nominated for their off-Broadway productions. So you can check out the full list of nominees on Broadway.com. And another bio, bio play is in the works. We are talking about Dr. Maya Angelou. There's going to be a play, apparently, about her life and her story. And it's called Phenomenal Woman, An Evening with Maya Angelou. And it's aiming for a 2021, God, that feels far away, it's Broadway far bow. Away. It's far now, away. Phenomenal Woman is one of her most famous poems, but she's Perhaps the m she did so much. She was an activist. Yes. She was a poet. She was an author. She was an what else? What did Actress. I say? Actress, a dancer. Actress. She did it all. But she is probably most known for her classic book, I Know Why the Caged Bird Sings, mm -hmm. and she got the Presidential Medal of uh, Freedom Award in 2011. Um, so this is being produced with the support of her son, Guy Johnson. It just sounds. We don't have a lot of details about it, no. but right. it's Let alone a casting. phenomenal <laughs> life. And it, I'm just really interested and excited yes. about it. I'm excited about the actresses who could take on the role. So, well, it just depends on what point in her life they're going to start with. Of course. She lived a long and fruitful life. Um, yes. So it is going to be a one-woman stage play, but there is no casting. And uh, that's all we really know right now. But keep an eye out for further details. There you mm -hmm. go. And a wicked witch is flying to the West End. And no, I'm not talking about Alphaba. Aha. Uh -huh. <laughs> She's been there. That's taken care She's of. She's still there. <laughs> yes. She's still there. She's so good. She's we good. found out today that the worst witch, which is a witch witch, is wow. I Ooh. know okay. based on the children's book. It's a theatrical experience, and it's going to arrive in the West End this summer. Uh, this follows a successful UK, UK touring production. Um, so this is... Um, a children's book about an ordinary girl who finds herself in a school for witches. Um, you just find yourself in a school for yeah, witches. Yeah, hey. <laughs> and uh, mayhem ensues. Of course. So this production is going to run uh, from July 24th through September 8th at the Vaudeville Theater in the West End. And we got a first look of the Queen of Kings. King Lear. We have a first look at King Lear starring Glenda Jackson, the Tony winner. Glenda Jackson, the queen. That's what you're referring to. Yes. Um, it's black and white. It's artsy. Present day dress. Directed by Sam Gold. Also features Ruth Wilson, Jane Howdyshell, Elizabeth Marble, uh, Easling O'Sullivan, Pedro Pascal. Look, it's just got an incredible cast. Incredible cast. Go mm -hmm. just look at the pictures. It's opening soon. Take a look. Thursday. There you go. And we got a brand new show people with a very pretty woman. Yes, yeah, so we have a new episode of Show People on the site featuring Samantha Barks, who, as we all know, is the star of Pretty Woman the Musical. Um, she talked a lot, of, a lot about being in the production, about meeting Julia Roberts, uh, who about originated the About her Les Mis breakout role Les in the Miz. movie. So definitely check out this episode on the site. Uh, it's up now. Oh, there's more. Ooh. Oh, there's more. We will get to Tevya in a second. But first, we have some other things on the site. Yes. We have... Ali Stroker singing I Can't Say No on The Tonight Show. Did I say that correctly? You I can't. sure did. Yeah. Thank you. I kind of practiced a little. <laughs> uh, ben Platt sings Older on The Late Late Show. Lots of other things to check out on Broadway.com. But first, 
Stay with us because we're going to talk to Stephen Skebel. Andy, thank you. You bet it. Thanks for having me. Caitlin, tell us a little more about our guest, please. Gladly. Yes, we have Stephen Skybell here in the studio with us today. He is currently starring in the Yiddish language production of Fiddler on the Roof off Broadway as Tevia, which as of today has earned him a Lucille Lortel Award nomination for Best Leading Actor in a Musical. Woo! Well deserved. Uh, he has been, you, may, you may have seen him on Broadway when he was in Fiddler on the Roof, Wicked, oh, we have, we talked about Wicked, always, there's always Wicked somewhere, Pal Joey, The Full Monty, and a whole lot more. He's done it all. We're so happy to have him here. Make sure to follow Fiddler NYC on social media to stay up to date on this uh, acclaimed production, and please leave all of your questions in the comments below. Please welcome Stephen and Beth. Thanks, Caitlin. Hi, Stephen. Hello. Can I be the first? Probably not the first, but can I be? <laughs> Tomorrow is the first. I need to say a mazel tov to you. Thank you. For <laughs> your nomination. Yes, thank How you. How does it feel? Well, it f it feels wonderful. You know, I'm uh, I uh, I wasn't looking for it, and Samara called me and told me it happened. I wasn't even thinking about it. I'm delighted, obviously happy for myself, but delighted for the the show in general that it should be nominated for best revival. Uh, for Joel, who was nominated Joel as Gray, director. The director. And for, of course, Jackie. So um, it's just, you know, the the show began as a six-week summer idea downtown. And so people can't get enough. It keeps right. Extending, it was extended, extended, extended. So to be here now, receiving, having the show receive Lucille Lortel nominations is the sweetest gravy you can imagine <laughs> for what was not part of the initial notion of what this show could be for me. It's very successful. It's very moving. Tell me your, and I know you have one, tell yeah. me your... Fiddler history. <laughs> <laughs> well, yeah, it goes way back. I grew up in a small Texas town, Lubbock, Texas, and I was a, an actor at the Children's Theater there, which also had a, um, a community theater for adults, and they did Fiddler on the Roof, and so my first time doing Fiddler on the Roof was as a little chuppa boy when I was 11 <laughs> years old, and uh, then I played Tevya when I was 17 at the National Very Music Camp in Interlochen, Michigan. But I did receive Best Actor for it. Well, there you go. <laughs> there it is. Not many 17 year olds have right. five daughters. <laughs> That's <laughs> right. I was working from an imagined experience. And then I played him again at 21 Yale undergrad, mm -hmm. Tevya. And then uh, I had did a. Did you have a beard back then? Or was it? I think it was probably a glue on beard. <laughs> then I had a big hiatus where I was looking for any opportunity to play Tevya in an age appropriate time. Um, I, I did Laser Wolf two years ago in the Broadway revival, the Danny Burstein one, mm -hmm. and then this one came my way. So it, it, I, I have I've been I, I've been thinking about Tevya for a long time, and so to get to do uh, the joke, of course, is that when I was cast as Tevya, and I've uh, just my luck, I'm finally playing Tevya in Yiddish. Right, that's the that's the trick. <laughs> so, what did you know Yiddish? I, I had mean, all, yeah. look, I'm Jewish. Yeah. My great grandparents spoke Yiddish. I didn't understand what they were saying, but I got the gist. Trust me. Right, right. Um, uh, and it, there's a little bit in all New Yorkers speak a little bit of Yiddish. Right, 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 right. We all say uh, there you got a little schmutz. Meshug, you got a little schmutz. schmutz. Yeah, yeah. Uh, we all we all quetch. Ask Jackie Hoffman about that one. She's good at that. <laughs> one. Um, and we can go through our favorite Yiddish words because yeah. they're so good. And yeah. you even even just I have to use my hands when I speak Yiddish. <laughs> but I couldn't say that. I know very many people who are fluent. Yeah. Were, did you have that? N no, I, I had studied Yiddish. Uh, my, bro the, my brother and I had tried to learn it on our own over the phone for a while. Over the phone? Over the phone. We were living in different cities. <laughs> oh, I see. With each other. With each other. <laughs> right. Okay. Yes. I was like, um, is there a teacher? I was no. Okay. But, but then I did, I, I was able uh, to find a Northwestern professor during the, so I was doing Wicked in Chicago, so I had a lot of downtime, so I contacted her name. I'd like to give her a shout out. Hannah Fagel Turtletaub. And Hannah, she, thank you. <laughs> right, she was my Yiddish teacher, so I went to her home once a week during the summer of 2006 and had Yiddish lessons Why did you her. have this interest? Well, that's what they asked me when <laughs> I met with them to play Tevye in Yiddish. They're like, why? And the truth is, I could tell them the truth, is that because one day I imagined that I would have something to do with Yiddish on the stage. Oh, because okay. I knew I knew of the wealth of Yiddish theater in New York City and in the world. I, I knew that, I you know, I grew up singing Yiddish songs mm -hmm. song to my parents and my grandparents. And I just thought, maybe something one day with Yiddish. 
and and it and it happened, you know. And so I'm thank I'm thankful for the opportunity. When I, I did tell my agent when I auditioned for it, you tell them I speak Yiddish, but wow. that was not a hundred percent true. But at the audition, they were like, "How is it that you speak Yiddish?" Yeah, so, most people have like what a hundred words, fifty words. <laughs> right. How many words do you? This really one's have? got a lot of words. <laughs> to tell you. Yeah. But so uh, anyway. Um, but they've whip, they whipped us all into shape because I would, the show has about three natural Yiddish speakers. Everyone else had to learn it yeah. for the show. So they, they whip us into shape and still to this day send us notes and say you're going a little bit this way or a little bit that way with the Yiddish. I don't want to be simplistic, but I want to explain what Yiddish is to people who might not know because okay. it is not, you're not going to find a country that speaks Yiddish and only Yiddish. Right. So yeah. I want to explain a little bit if you don't mind. Yeah, it, no, I mean the thing about it is also the reason why I wanted to learn Yiddish with my brother initially is because the letters are the Hebrew letters, which I just thought if I learn Yiddish, I'll never, after my bar mitzvah, I'll never forget my Hebrew letters. I'll mm -hmm. always know my Hebrew letters. But so y Yiddish is sort of a, a language that uh, of the diaspora, that is to say when the when the Jews were exiled at the destruction of the Second Temple mm -hmm. many, many years ago, they just started traveling the world. And so they, they kept their Lushan HaKodesh, Hebrew, and in it they just brought all the languages that uh, were part of the vernacular of wherever they ended. So there, there's actually, um, you know, there's it's, it's strongly a lot of German. German. Mm -hmm. It has Hungarian, uh, there's Russian, there's all sorts of influences um, all through the lens of the Hebrew letters. Yeah. And, and through the, so, you know, so it's not exactly German. So it is through the, the, the Jewish ears, they heard the word that way, which is not really the German mm -hmm. pronunciation. So it almost, to my imagination, has embedded in it the, ac the accent that they would have said it with since they're yeah, not native there is speakers. Something like that. Yeah. And it's very musical in yeah. itself, just yeah. the languages. Yeah. So to sing in it, tell yeah. me about that. Well, I mean, the, the, the thing I love about it, it is it's such a visceral language, it's full bodied. Uh, it, right. I like if you, yeah. if you insult someone in Yiddish. Yeah. Yeah, they feel it in their yeah, bones. Right. They feel it all we're, the way through well, the I'll back just of their say, throat. We have this thing at the theater. One of our stage managers, Rachel Calter, puts up a Yiddish quote of the day every oh. day at our sign-in uh, place. And she went through a whole period of Yiddish insults and Yiddish curses. curses. Yeah. And the, you walk in and you are like, oh my goodness. But when you translate them, they might not be so. Right, I can't think of one and I don't I want to say it on yeah, air. We don't want to curse <laughs> but, um, but, but I like to say that Yiddish, Yiddish kind of goes in two directions at once because it, and it's perfect for Fiddler because, it, because he, Tevye, talks to God mm -hmm. and he's a, he's a man, of, he's also milking cows. So that to me is sort of the way Yiddish feels it feels it's exalted of, yeah, and grounded all at once yeah. and so um and then the joy of, of the real joy of doing tevya in yiddish is that there are some great great interpreters of tevya mm -hmm. uh, that i am standing in their shadow but because i get to sidestep it with yiddish it's a way to really feel like i i don't even have to compare with others because i'm i'm in a different vernacular yeah. so no, so um, I feel that's a blessing for me that I I don't have to deal with the pressure of how will I do if I were a rich man when in mine right. it's when ich bin a Rothschild which even translated is if I were a Rothschild mm -hmm. not rich man which again our Yiddish version has subtle interesting uh, differences which point back to Shalom Aleichem who wrote the right. stories because if I were a Rothschild was indeed a story that he wrote about Tevye that's amazing. Yeah. I love that. We're going to take questions from you. I know you have a lot. Yes. Kaylin. Amazing. Oh. So Jesse would like to know that since you were a part of the most recent Broadway revival of yeah. On the Roof and now you're starring in Off-Broadway, what has this experience been? What is kind of have you been able to reflect and see the major differences between them? Obviously, besides Yiddish, but... Right. Well, one of the big ones is in L'Chaim, I get to sing the low note, because Laser <laughs> Wolf sings the high note. So, uh, I mean, that's the thing, is that, you know, having played Laser, I'm now experiencing the role from Tevye's point of view, mm -hmm. and the thing I, uh, one of the things I did love about the recent revival, the, the Bart Share revival, was that he had given so much interesting thought to Laser Wolf. And mm -hmm. so um, so now just to have had that whole laser journey and now I'm back on Tevye's side of the table, uh, I, I mean, I, it, it's increased, I think, the relationship between Tevye and Laser for me. Mm -hmm. Just to know that I've been on both sides of that has, has deepened um, my experience of the play. I mean, any production of Fiddler that, I mean, it, 
Hither it is only one of deepens. the shows that's been most translated into other languages. Yeah. It's been done all over it's the world. It's being performed somewhere right now. It's being you performed know. somewhere right now. If you go on YouTube, you can see it in Korean. You can see it in every yeah. language that exists. And there is a story, if I can quickly say, yeah. about the original, is that when they t toured it to Japan, the, the Japanese production team was like, does this really... Um, play in America because it is such a Japanese story, yeah. you mm -hmm. know, and so there is something it's about so it universal. that is identifiable for every nation, every culture, every walk of life. But doing it in Yiddish feels, in what way to you? Feels, it just, uh, I mean, I as a person love tradition, I do love tradition and history, um, and just to go back to the, the source of Sholem Aleichem, it just feels, it just feels this is the way these characters would be experiencing and expressing themselves in this moment-to-moment -moment life. Right. Mm -hmm. Just, um, I mean, I, I, It's people, like doing Oedipus yeah. in Greek. Exactly, you know. More or less. Right. More or less. <laughs> less than Maybe more. a little less. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sorry. So let's go back yes. to your question. Yeah. So uh, Marcy wants to know if you could speak a little bit about the staging and the set of this production, the simplicity that sure. comes with uh, it. I mean, uh, I'd love to. Joel Gray, who's also nominated for a Lucille Lortel Award, who's probably won every award known to man, um, <laughs> directed it. And his, his concept was was breathtaking in its simplicity and its searching for truth. And so the set is is very minimal, but so profoundly resonant. Mm -hmm. It's all made of paper, parchment, what you could imagine what the Torah scrolls are written on, is all we have. It's an open space with paper everywhere and just minimal set pieces. So, so if, you, if you thought, oh, I'm gonna go see Fiddle on the Roof, they'll have painted little cottages with mm. little thatched roofs. You don't need it. That's not us. And, and that is also an aspect of it that just opens it up, you know, so um, I mean, that the, the opening image is of our, of our Fiddler who walks out on stage and climbs a chair to a table to a chair to another chair, a very precarious pile of black furniture. Mm -hmm. is our fiddler on the roof and and I I love that and mm -hmm. audiences seem to be responding to it and Joel, Joel has um uh, he saw the original out of town fiddler in 1964 wow. in Washington wow. DC before it came to Broadway and he's been rumbling around with it and so his ideas about how to stage it what it might how it really couldn't be mined for mm -hmm. all its deep truth is uh, I, I mean and I just think he's he's been a fantastic wizard. That's a pun <laughs> for a wicked pointing <laughs> wizard, a wizard Check. of theater to really get this. Uh, and we originally put it up in three and a half weeks. Wow. wow. You know. All right. I would be remiss. Yes. If I did not ask you about Jackie Hoffman. <laughs> <laughs> because the woman is a legend. Yes. Uh, it's true. If not in her own mind, but still. We <laughs> love Jackie Hoffman. We love Jackie Hoffman. Tell me, and, and, ja and this is something near and dear to her as well. So tell yeah. me a little bit about working with Jackie. Well, the funny thing is ja uh, Yenta and Tevye never are on stage together. So right. uh, the, I jokingly one day said to her, it could be played by the same actor if you want to take over Tevye. You <laughs> could do both. Um, <laughs> But the, interestingly enough, uh, the first day of rehearsal, I was, uh, we all had to go around and just sort of say something. There was a group that this was their first fiddler ever, and oh, this wow. is Jackie's first fiddler. Which and seems weird. It, it, does, it seems odd, but how appropriate that she just threw herself, you know, full force into this Yiddish-speaking yenta that is just phenomenal. I mean, you know, I, during the rehearsal process with Jackie, with our Fruma Sarah, the people that rattled off all this Yiddish, I was just, I was like, I gotta, I gotta keep up with them. Brush because up. She just, she just gets all the laughs in Yiddish. Mm -hmm. And then another thing that Joel did, which I just think is so beautiful, is that usually Yenta couldn't be seen as a one trick pony, which yes. is comedy, 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 mm -hmm. comedy, comedy, comedy. And we know Jackie can do comedy, but she brings such deep, heartfelt, mm pathos by the end of this play when she goes off, when she has her idea of where she will go mm -hmm. when we're all thrown out of Anatevka, that, I mean, I think she might, I'm, she's having the time of her life. I just hope she stays around and doesn't, you know, go off to the next Emmy nominated. Well, thing. you know, the woman's a star. Right. All right, we're going to take one more question okay. and then we're going to get going. Last question is Jake would like to know what was the process like recording the cast album? Oh, well, um, the, again, we, yeah, we're having a cast album. It's going to be coming out. It's going to be, they say it's going to be the cast album of Fiddler that you're never, you're going to only want 
the original and ours because we have all these incredible bonus tracks on it. I, can't, I won't say anything else about it. I probably shouldn't say anything about it. <laughs> but so you're getting us excited. Say everything. Yeah, you there's going to be bonus tracks and bonus performers singing those tracks wow. um, in addition to our Yiddish um, our Yiddish version. So it, it was unbelievable. It was just, mm -hmm. again, another cherry on yet another rice pudding <laughs> for us because we didn't think this would be happening. And so yeah. here we are recording Fiddler, it's Fiddler on the Roof in Yiddish. And, you know, I... I I'm just, I really am just a regular guy. I've made my life in the theater mostly, film and TV. Um, so to be a part of something that is, the, it's the first time it's being done in the United States in Yiddish, and then to have it recorded so it's a document that I can take with me to the grave of this was our Yiddish fiddler that we did. And I just think, um, so it was a joy, a kind of, it was done in, it was done in a day, <laughs> so it was Not a very long sure. day, but um, it was from start to finish like a, a party recording it, and Joel was there with mm -hmm. us and just sort of tweaking us and goosing us and, and you know encouraging us to go deeper and deeper into what the sonic ex performance can be. Uh, I'm excited for it to come out. Amazing. Steven, thank you for coming in. I'm gonna ask you one more question. Yeah. Favorite Yiddish word? Uh, well, let's see. My fa well, uh, 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 this is I know one, this is it's hard, but this is my favorite expression that Tevye gets to say. He says Zeitel and Mottel in, in the in the Broadway version it's they there is poor the, I forget what it is. Now now I do forget <laughs> the Broadway version, but he says Mottel and Zeitel um, work with Blutgen Schweiss, which we could translate as blood and tears. Right. But um, it, it really like is that. bloody sweat. They mm. work with bloody sweat. That's wow. how hard they're working. And so I just love that because that to me is, in, in a nutshell, what Yiddish has. It's so descriptive, so full-bodied, and I just love it. My favorite Yiddish word is yeah. mensch. This guy is one. <laughs> <laughs> Go see the Yiddish Fiddler on the Roof. And Caitlin, will you take us on out? Yes. Thank you guys so much for tuning in for this very special Live at Five. We are Live at Five every single day on Facebook. You can listen to us wherever you get your podcasts by searching for hashtag Live at Five and hitting that subscribe button. Be sure to tune in tomorrow. We talk to Will Rowland of Be More Chill.